creation of things. Uh, sometimes you substitute one thing for another. When something got uncomfortable or it started causing some fear, I would switch over to something else. Some persons in the real estate audience may be wondering how in the world can you become addicted to a person? Well, when you grow up the way that I did, where you were already codependent on anyone who actually told you that you were something more than you thought you were and made you feel good, um, that person became somebody you wanted to attach yourself to. At least that was my story. I attached myself to folks that made me feel good. And how do you think that can turn into an addiction? It can turn into an addiction because you start searching out people that are going to sanction anything. People that aren't going to pull you on the things that you're doing wrong, especially when they're an enabler and they're somebody that's interested in what you're doing for them and not necessarily is good for you. So um, you will confirm the fact that an individual can be become addicted to a person, a place, or a thing. Absolutely. And um, uh, I don't know about you, but it took me... Um, coming into the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous and getting into a 12-step program to realize that a person can become addicted to something else other than alcohol and drugs. Yeah, I took it to the program as well to show me that I was obsessive and compulsive about a lot of things. It had nothing to do with the alcohol and the drugs. You can be addicted to lying. Yeah. Mm. I think that was my first drug. Really? I could get outside of myself. I could make me be somebody else. I could live vicariously through books and magazines and say that I was that rather than what I was. Powerful. In other words, uh, almost living in a, in a fantasy world. Absolutely. Anything that felt better than my reality was something that I attached myself to, and I used that to cope. That was my coping mechanism, to read a book, uh, see something on TV, and try to, in fact, live that persona until reality shows up for real. And the God of my understanding at that time showed me evidence that <laughs> this didn't work. Erica, how long how long did you did you use a drink or drug, and what was the what was the drug that brought you to your knees? I used uh, for the amount of time that I'm clean, thirteen years, and the crack cocaine brought me to my knees. It controlled me in a way that I never want to be controlled by anything else in life. And what was it that caused you? To stop using a drink or drug, did you run into a brick wall? I mean, uh, what, what helped somebody out there? What happened? The thing basically was because I had a tumultuous childhood and I had a daughter out there that I had traded for a bag of dope, crack, or whatever it was in that bag, that this child was now pregnant. And she sent me a letter when I was in rehab during the end of my using and told me that she was going to tell her unborn child when he was born that I was already dead. Wait a minute, I want you to explain. You said that you traded your child for a bag of dope. Explain that. As a teenager, I was married when I was 17 years old. I got pregnant with my daughter when I was 16 years old. Um, there was incest in my family. There was a question whether the incestual person or my husband was the father of that child. And that caused some resentment. That caused some fear. That caused some major confusion in my life. And I loved this child and I had lost myself and was no longer a parent. I was no longer around. And when she was able to contact me in that rehab facility, she wrote me a letter and she told me if I ever used again that my grandson would never know me because he would know that I was dead. So when, when, when this child was conceived, uh, you were involved in an incestuous relationship? Yes. With a family member? Absolutely. And who was his family member? My brother. Your brother. So you were sleeping with your brother and your husband at the same time? Yes. And when you got pregnant, um, did your husband know that, about this relationship that you were having with your brother? He did not. He knew that something was wrong in our relationship, but he, I never divulged the uh, particulars. I think a lot of times that God allows us to go through certain valleys in the shadows of our death and we not know why we are going through this until we come out of the valley. I believe that. As a child, I was molested at nine years old and that continued until I was 13 years old. 
and because the family member was aware of all that, um, I was taken advantage of. I did not know the difference between love and sex, and the person that had the ancestral relationship with me as well as the person that molested me, they told me they loved me. And that's not something I heard on a regular, and I thought at that time, being a child, that love was connected to sex. Was that your brother or, your, or, or another, another member of your family? It was, my, it was my brother. So, and your brother was the only individual that, that, you, that you were having this incestuous relationship with in, in your family? Yes. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm going to ask you this question uh, because God has brought you through the valley.